Well, what do we have out on the bench today? This time it's a little bit different. What we have today is a prototype of a machine to sort brass cartridge cases um, by size. And why would I want to have something that did that? Well, I have this giant bucket of brass and I really don't want to sort through it by hand, even with the uh, giant, the, the big turbo sifter uh, machine that I built, put together to simplify that. It's still, it's a pain. So what this machine is designed to do is a brass case, well, cartridge case comes in and lands on a little platform. These, a gripper closes and then that slides across underneath a set of micro switches until it finds one of the appropriate height and then the gripper releases the case and the carrier returns to pick up another cartridge. If it doesn't hit an appropriate micro switch, uh, it'll get to the end and it'll hit a limit switch, let it go into a junk bin and then come back. And then uh, one of the common situations is that cartridges get nested together and you end up with uh, something that's really too tall, can jam up your machine, etc. So the very first switch is an overheight. So if it's too taller than any of the cases that I'm looking for, it'll get dr uh, dropped into the very first bucket to uh, be uh, checked over to see if it's just nested cases or if it's some cartridge I'm not interested in. And we don't have much circuitry yet. This will all be run by a microcontroller, probably a Raspberry Pi, something like that. But we do have the uh, motor driver running and uh, it's all based around this, uh, I think it's the a4988 driver. There's plenty of these around. Um, I don't know that I particularly recommend uh, this brand right here, but this is the one I am using. And as you can see, it's it's cheap, ten dollars for a five pack. Uh, that's on you know two day shipping. Um, and this is how it's wired up. The uh, motor is on the right in the green with the green and yellow coils this is a stepper motor then uh, it has its own uh, power input separate power input for the motor up to well in this case 35 volts i'm using a 12 volt uh, power supply for that then we just have a 5 volt supply to run the circuitry on the board the uh, microcontroller then sets the uh, direction and and uh, sends a clock signal in to make it travel one step we're also leveraging the enable pin. Let's look at how uh, that's set up. So what we have is the uh, micro switches are all daisy chained across, including the uh, platform end limit switches and all the height switches. Those are then connected into the driver board through its enable pin. That way when the motor is running, if the uh, platform cruises along and one of the micro switches is triggered, the motor will stop. That will allow me then to uh, release the case, change the direction, and then I can tap the override button to re-enable the motor. And that's basically how this thing works. Let's take a look at how it runs. Oh, I, I should take a quick look at the, the uh, gripper platform as well. This is uh, pr pretty primitive. Um, let's zoom in a little on that. So we have two 3D printed grippers and these are printed out of nylon. It, uh, it took a little messing around to get that to work. It's my first time working with nylon. And as you can see, I had to uh, create a, a very large, um, we call it brim around it in order to keep it from lifting off of the uh, build print bed. But these two grippers have a small V-notch to improve uh, centering of the uh, case in, in line with the switches. And then uh, they're on both mounted on the same linear rail set, which keeps both platforms parallel and nicely lined up. There is a spring which tries to provides the gripping pressure. That way, we're not trying to over grip these cases. If I need a little more grip, I can add another spring in, in, next to it and, and get a little more tension. The gripper is controlled by a uh, servo, and I'm just going to use a little manual uh, controller here. 
And so the microcontroller would then send a signal to the servo to release, and that would cause the gripper to close. And as you can see, we have, uh, modest, we have modest tension on it, and that will then grip a case. To release, the servo simply swings around and presses on the arm, pushing the platforms apart. Let's watch it run. And remember, it is really manual. That's me having to, to flip the switch for the direction and uh, operate the uh, controller here. The case is drops down. The uh, gripper closes. Oh, had it set for the wrong direction. Now it'll travel across. Let's see if it stops at 40. And it stopped at the 40 cal. So at this point, the output would turn off to the dry stepper motor. We would then open the gripper. Direction changes. And the microcontroller would return the case back. If the, uh, if it's say it's a 45, whoop. If it's a 45 case, uh, again, it doesn't have to be super centered in that. Oh, yeah, there's a few flaws yet still on this thing uh, since I'm manually operating it. All right, there we go. And it goes across and it missed. So I've got to adjust this a little bit. Um, the 45 case is should be plenty tall enough to hit the other switch. So I'll have to do some more work on that. As you can see, it's still uh, got some work to do. Not sure what's up, but we'll uh, keep working with it. Anyway, uh, that's really what I wanted to show. And I've got to get it, get the microcontroller uh, programmed up. I need to mess with the height of these uh, switches a little bit more. There is just uh, so much uh, still to be done to get this uh, all to uh, calibrate and work properly. Anyway, that's what I've been working on. Catch you later.